All right. So we know that osteoarthritis is a degenerative joint disease and it affects millions of people worldwide. In this condition, you've got chondrocytes, which are your cartilage cells. You've got synovial cells, which are your synovium is what lines your joint. It's the it's basically the outer packaging of the joint and it's highly innervated and be, can become very inflamed and painful in people. And other joint cells become activated when exposed to abnormal environment, including mechanical stress, inflammatory cytokines, or disorganization of matrix proteins. So basically you can have a traumatic induced osteoarthritis, and I'm going to use the term OA from here out just because that's, it's easier to speak that way. <laughs> or you can have an inflammatory cascade and often one begets the other. So if you've got an inflammatory cascade going on and then you bump the joint or you hurt it a little bit, it's going to be more prone to injury and vice versa. If you've got a traumatic injury and then that's going to obviously set off the inflammatory cascade. So data has accrued to suggest that these GLP-1 agonists, which bind to the glucagon-like peptide 1 receptor have beneficial pleiotropic effects such as immunomodulation, anti-inflammation, and neuronal protection, not just in the brain, in the body, the nerves. Thus, because of their anti-inflammatory properties, this group hypothesized that GLP-1-based therapies could benefit OA patients. This review focuses on the GLP-1 receptor pathway, molecular mechanisms, and phenotypes related to OA pathogenesis. So, there's very little out there that actually helps osteoarthritis. The standard of care is pretty crappy. It's pretty barbaric. It's pretty old school. I mean, you know, the jam, you go to the doctor, they may offer you anti-inflammatories off the get-go, something like ibuprofen, which is not a great idea long-term. They could potentially offer you a cortisone injection, which melts the joints further. And actually it decreases inflammation in the short term, but it actually long-term does some pretty bad damage. That's about all they got. And then you could go on to pain pills, which who wants to be on opioids? And opioids actually upregulate microglial cell activation in the brain, which actually makes you hurt worse in the long run. So none of that is a good idea. And my entire, just so you guys know my background, my entire career was spent prior to COVID treating musculoskeletal conditions and doing regenerative joint injections on thousands of people and thousands and thousands of joints. So I know joint pain very well. I live with it personally. You guys have heard my story in the past and I live with a very painful musculoskeletal condition. And that's what actually got me interested in these peptides, that and the cognitive impacts, which is very intimately related to pain. So when your brain starts going, your pain tends to ramp up. It's just, it's kind of how it works together. So that really got me going on these. And I've been microdosing GLP ones with really profound effects for myself. I'm seeing very similar results in my patients and tiny little doses are getting huge amounts of pain down or eliminated. So it's pretty cool. OA is the leading cause of disability in the world, by the way, 300 million individuals worldwide are affected by this. In the absence of disease modifying treatments, the FDA has characterized OA as a serious disease. It affects all the joints, really, including the knees, hands, hips, and spine, and it is the leading cause of impaired mobility in older people. This is a chicken and egg situation in that if you have severe osteoarthritis, you're going to stop moving so much. And when you stop moving so much, you obviously pack on the weight and you start to become more metabolically unsound. And as you become more metabolically unsound, your osteoarthritis worsens. And as you pack on more weight, your osteoarthritis worsens. So OA is a chemical, hormonal, and mechanical issue all overlapping. And the they know that the overlap between OA and metabolic dysfunction is real. And it's just not talked about very often because I don't think most doctors understand it. Most doctors don't know what the heck to do with metabolic syndrome, by the way. And then obviously post-traumatic injury is another cause of it. So all of this together leads to these really deleterious cellular effects. You get necrosis in the joint of the, you know, all different types of cells in there. You get apoptosis. So cells start exploding, literally killing themselves. Your, your joint melts. I don't know how else to put it. I tell patients this. Once the joint starts melting, it just keeps potentiating itself. So like a worse situation or a bad situation gets worse, right? And it sucks. And I've lived with it. And I've had both my hips go on me. And it's once it starts, it's like, oh, crap, here we go, right? And you live through it. And then a new joint pops up, <laughs> especially if you have an autoimmune condition impacting your joints. So that said, I was really looking for something 
novel and new and safe and effective. And I'm really hoping that GLP ones are it because I think done correctly and cycled, you really can get long term use out of these. I'm going to be talking about that in my upcoming program. Oh, actually, you guys. So by the time this launches, I will still be having my free training up. I've got a four part free training all about GLP one agonists. It's called Ozempic Uncovered. It's really good. I'm having so much fun with it. And you guys can opt in for free and get the four part training. The whole thing shuts down though, Monday night. So Monday, the 26th, I believe it is at midnight Pacific standard time, it's gone. So if you're listening to this, jump right off this podcast and jump over there and get in there and watch them all before they disappear because it's really an awesome training. And then it leads you into my new program that I'm launching, which is going to be fantastic. And I'm going to teach you how to use these correctly. This is for practitioners and the public. Anyway, inflammation has a fundamental role in osteoarthritis initiation and development. So anything that could be used as an anti-inflammatory safely is obviously going to be helpful. 